This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. While well, Russia and Saudi Arabia launched an oil war against each other over the weekend, and the price of oil is plunging. In the U.S., prices fell to only $27 a barrel, and we're getting reports that in some areas of the country, gasoline is already selling for well under $2 a gallon. The global economic slowdown triggered by the coronavirus is what set the price war off. But instead of cutting production to avoid large surpluses, Russia decided to maintain production and gain market share. So Saudi Arabia decided to prevent Russia from doing that, and the result is plunging prices. Other experts say Russia is also trying to cripple the U.S. fracking industry by driving prices below production costs. And this price war is only just getting going. We could see $20 a barrel before it's over. Even though General Motors is coming out with a full family of electric vehicles with a dedicated EV platform, it's not giving up on the Chevrolet Bolt, which has been in the market for about three years. Chevy sold a little over 16,000 Bolts last year, but it hopes to do better with an enhanced version that gets an upgraded interior to address complaints that there was too much hard plastic inside, It gets a new infotainment system and a new front fascia and headlamps. But wait, there's more. Chevrolet is also going to have a slightly longer version with an extra three inches of wheelbase that adds five inches to the overall length. Could it be that GM wants to squeeze in a few more batteries for longer range? The Bolt is now rated at 259 miles with its 60 kilowatt hour battery it probably wouldn't take much more to boost it to 300 miles. GM calls this new version an EUV, presumably for electric utility vehicle. The one they displayed looked like it had more ground clearance, and so we're guessing that an all-wheel drive version could also be in the cards. Is affordability for new cars really a problem? You bet it is, and here are the numbers to prove it. Historically, it's taken the average American family 26 weeks of income to buy a new car. Even though car prices always go up, so does income. So measuring how many weeks of income it takes to buy a car is a good apples-to-apples comparison from one era to another. Well, it no longer takes 26 weeks of income to buy a new car. Now it takes nearly 31 weeks. Keep in mind that the average household in the United States now makes over $66,000 a year, but the average car is nearly thirty-eight dollars This explains why a smaller percentage of Americans buy new cars and are turning to used cars instead. It all comes down to affordability. In Friday's show last week, we talked about the evolution of Cadillac's logo because it looks like it might be changing again. After our video went up, our viewer, GM Veteran, provided a comment with an interesting bit of information. Those ducks in the logo are actually called merlets. The Cadillac marketing staff was pretty adamant about using the correct terminology. GM Veteran worked on projects with Cadillac. The birds, called merlets, are adaptations of the Martin, but without legs or beaks. Today, both the Caron and the Merlets are absent in the Cadillac crest. And of course, the Caron is the crest. And we want to thank you for that feedback, GM veteran. We love learning things like this. The current Chevrolet Express has been around since 1995, but it remains a popular choice with customers. Commercial sales alone increased 12% last year, and the van continues to receive updates. The Express and low-cab forward trucks get a new 6.6-liter V8 engine, which replaces a 6-liter unit and was originally introduced in the heavy-duty Silverado 2500 and 3500. It produces 401 horsepower and 464 foot-pounds of torque. That's 17% more power and 24% more torque. 
Chevy expects the new engine to be popular. 70% of buyers opted for the old 6-liter V8. You know, you would think that selling luxury cars with a storied brand to rich people would be an easy business proposition. But Maserati is struggling. Last year, it sold only 26,500 vehicles, and that was down 25%. Its revenues fell 40% to 1.6 billion euros, and it managed to lose 199 million euros. You'd think that Maserati's first SUV, the Levante, would have turned things around, like the Urus did for Lamborghini. But maybe the Levante just looks too much like a car than a sport ute. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. We hosted a fascinating discussion over the weekend about making sure all these ADAS systems or advanced driver assistance systems continue to operate properly even after you get in a crash. But if just one sensor is slightly misaligned, the system can be rendered useless. They need to be checked even when doing routine maintenance. Here's Mike Anderson, the CEO of Collision Advice, and Jake Roddenroth, the Director of Industry Relations at Aztec, explaining what this is all about. So it's been my experience that in most of the owner's manuals, it will give you some standards that say if these things happen, it may require a calibration. But I think, Jake, you could probably get to that more clearly. Yeah, one of the advanced driver assist uh, drivers is what I call them. You know, you figure uh, alignments are a pretty heavy maintenance item, right? Most cars require those two times a year, uh, unless it's an exotic or a sports car, and it may even require it more. Um, so I would say they follow your main, your maintenance guide in your, in your owner's manual. Um, if you see four-wheel alignments, insist on the dealership or and or independent repair facility who's doing them for you uh, to research how the alignment is performed. As a consumer, I would want to see that in writing so that I could follow along as well, maybe even if I didn't understand it. Uh, but I would want to see the camera calibration because if you change thrust angle in an alignment situation, you change the way that camera sees the road. So those are the kinds of things from a maintenance perspective. Um, you definitely want to be mindful of that as you're servicing other components on the vehicles. It's very operation driven. It's not scantle driven, DTC driven, any of those kinds of things. You can't look at it and tell it that it's bad. You got to look at the operations being performed on that vehicle. There's really a ton of great information in this show, and it really is a must watch for anyone that has a vehicle with ADAS technology. And don't forget to tune in to AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. We'll be talking with a husband and wife team that run two of Honda's assembly plants. And it should be interesting to learn how they balance work time with time off. Anyway, that wraps up today's show. If you think we've earned it, please like it or subscribe. And we'll be right back here again tomorrow.